and this was took me by surprise because I eaten this restaurant for 20 plus years and I like everybody and anybody else never gave it more thorough assessment. And so what happened was my wife joined. I was never a member of this group. And she got sucked into it and she tried to bring my son into it and I saw that and, and he did me. Most of the people of Nelson were like me. They didn't know or care to know or have reason to care to know to look deeper as to who and what the 12 tribes are. I found out the hard way that they're not, they were not an innocent group of people, which is what I thought they were. They are being made in a factory where kids as young as nine years old are working on the assembly line. Police in the German state of Bavaria said they have raided the estate of a religious sect and taken away 40 children who they suspect were being beaten and otherwise physically punished. Children as young as nine working in a factory. This 11-year-old girl was on an assembly line. The world deserves to know what is going on. The so-called 12 tribes sect said in a statement on its website that the children were age one and a half to 17. These are the rods of authority, which we found hanging on a wall in the communal house. They're actually thin bamboo sticks, ready to be used on a child for any transgression, according to former members. The Yellow Deli Cafe. It's a chain that's been operating in the United States for quite some time. But secretly, it's run by a cult called the Twelve Tribes. The Twelve Tribes currently own and operate 15 restaurants worldwide, including one located right here in Boulder, Colorado. Nestled in a valley amidst the foothills of the Rocky Mountains lies a progressive little mountain town just 25 miles outside of Denver, Colorado. Consistently ranked one of the happiest, healthiest cities in America, Boulder has it all, from the scenery to the culture. But that's not all the Boulder's home to. Hidden in plain sight on the outskirts of town, there's a trailer park community, home to the 12 tribes. And a few miles away, right smack in the center of the town's busiest shopping district, lies the Yellow Deli restaurant. group has been accused of child labor, systematic abuse of children, in all forms and fashions and facets of life. In the 12 tribes, the word discipline equals the word hit with a stick. As Hawkins did more research, he learned a member living with the group had just finished jail time for possessing child pornography. We've asked some local residents to find out what they had to say about the local Yellow Deli and the 12 tribes community. So how long have you lived in Boulder for? I've lived in Boulder now for 21 years. And what can you tell me about the Yellow Deli restaurant? The Yellow Deli? Um, yeah, I mean, you're talking forced marriage, uh, child labor, alleged sexual abuse. But, uh, hell of a roast beef. I didn't know anything about them until they moved, the group moved into a house across the street and someone told me that it was a, uh, a religious group. I've seen people getting off the bus and walking over to the house. The women um, typically wore very plain, um, kind of old-fashioned Amish type of clothing. Uh, everybody had long hair. 
and there were children around and they used to um, form a circle in the backyard and pray on Sundays. We had to dig deeper. So our investigative team decided to look inside the restaurant, ask some questions to the staff, ourselves. Yeah, so we got out of the car at like 2 a.m. in front of the Yellow Deli. We decide we're gonna get a table near the back because they have like a bookshelf back there uh, with a bunch of weird reading material and like pamphlets that they're trying to hand out and their newsletter and stuff. But um, yeah, so I, I decide that um, I should order food because we probably shouldn't just sit there. So I get the flat iron special uh, sandwich and I mean, like, I hate to admit it, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It didn't taste bad, but, like, halfway through when I was eating it, I just got this feeling that I couldn't really tell what the meat was. So, eventually, I'm just like, this is way too creepy. I literally can't sit here anymore. Let's just get the f*** out of here. Um, we go up and pay and um, try to ask, like, the front desk lady some questions and stuff, and she kind of just refuses to answer and says we need to know her better. Um, you have to um, get to know us really better. <laughs> but anyways, she's like, why don't you guys come visit us? You can come visit us anytime. Let me get you the address. You don't have to, but that's for yeah, Friday yeah. night. We have an open house. And we're like, what? Like, okay, I guess. Um, so, we get there and um, we park kind of like a ways away so we can walk over to the community oh, and I'm just so <laughs> nervous. We walk up and there's just nobody there. Just nobody there. It's literally an empty driveway with like a school bus. And so we're like, I mean, we, I thought it was community day. I mean, there's literally nobody there. And then all of a sudden, just a toddler is like waving to us from some kind of high up window um, in what looked to be their main area. So, um, anyways, uh, maybe like a few minutes after that, this old, sick looking woman just like stumbles down the fucking stairs and introduces herself and like, yeah, we follow this old woman up the stairs and enter in and I look to my right and there are like 40 or 50 of the members all wearing headbands praying in a circle. <laughs> and they just looked at us like they were not expecting anyone. Like there, there was just no one in there who did not belong to the cult. And it was sure as f not community day. Yeah, so they clear up some space so we can join their praying circle and um, just do this weird little introduction. We are so honored that you took part of your Friday evening to come and spend with us. They just had us raise our hands up to pray to the Creator and pray to whatever and thank whoever. We're, we're all gonna lift our hands right now and we're gonna send her to surrender to the Creator. So yeah, after having our hands up and praying, uh, the kids started just screaming back and forth to each other. So after all the praying stuff, everyone just came up to us and started asking us our names, where we were from, and they were offering us drinks. And I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, how can I avoid drinking this stuff? And so I was like, I'm not a caffeine drinker. And the guy's like, oh, that's okay. It brings over like the, the punch looking red liquid hibiscus tea. I honestly had some, tasted a little weird, and I felt a little weird. And um, eventually we followed them into another part of the compound that was like the dining area, I guess, um, where they said the food would be ready. Upon walking in, it just smelled like shit. 
it just smelled like rotting fish throughout the entire place. It was like obscene. But um, the food wasn't ready because they just clearly were not expecting anyone. It was just not community. <laughs> so we sit down at the table with some people who are either severely autistic or have literally never socialized with people in their entire life. It was pretty incredible, honestly. Um, and then a lady came over and offered us these just disgusting looking salads with like huge chunks of shit in them. <laughs> and then I realized that I really didn't want to eat their grilled like rotting fish. So we refused the salads and the lady seemed extremely offended and then like hesitantly offered it to someone else in, in like in such a weird way. We decided we needed to get the out of there. Overall, that was horrible. I'm never going back there again. I'm never going back to the restaurant again. They are definitely a call, and every suspicion of mine has been confirmed from that visit. So what have we learned from this experience? All, all, that, all that we've shown you, all that you've seen, what can we draw from it as a society? Because we live in a society. You know, at the end of the day, this country was founded by religious extremists. They were called the Pilgrims. They fled Britain because their views of religion were far more backwards than the Anglican Church at the time. And at the end of the day, this country was founded on the principle of religious freedom. Because at the end of the day, do we really want the American government being able to tell you what you cannot and can do with your blood, your child? Should the government be interceding on behalf of these people and, you know? And at the end of the day, everything in this documentary is, at this point, conjecture. We're amateurs, young men. We're not professionals. We're not professionals at all. And at the end of the day, we may be slandering these fine people these fine, fine Americans. Because we are so bigoted that we can't imagine that other people might have different beliefs and traditions than us. So. So God bless America. Thank you and good night. Join us next time. So we've talked a lot about the 12 tribes as an organization, and uh, I want to clear up some confusion with facts and logic. The 12 tribes uh, organization is a uh, essentially a, a Christian revivalist movement with uh, multiple cells across multiple Western countries, including Germany, the United States, uh, these, uh, these people believe that uh, the laws of the Old Testament need to have more emphasis and uh, thus follow the uh, laws. But in fact, this group has been accused of anti-Semitism because as a, uh, you know, I'm too high. Look at the video link in the description below and we can link you to a free Brazzers account. They were started by the KKK, by Grand Dragon Clarence Thomas himself. Full disclosure, I'm a member of this cult. Like, it does not need to, need it to be in there.